99% of tech startups pick the wrong SaaS model. After reviewing 1,000 plus software patents, here's what I learned about choosing the right one. Hi, I am Rahul Dev, and I will help you answer one crucial question. Which type of SaaS business makes the most money? Today, we're breaking down three types of software businesses, horizontal, vertical, and orthogonal SaaS. By the end of this video, you'll understand exactly how each model works and which one might be right for you. Before we dive in, hit that subscribe button and notification bell to learn more about building successful tech businesses. Let's get started. Let me explain these three business models using something we all understand, restaurants. Imagine a big restaurant chain like McDonald's. They serve everyone, everywhere. That's horizontal SaaS, software that works for any business. Other examples are Zoom for video calls, Microsoft Office for documents, or Salesforce for customer management. Now, think about a restaurant that only serves Italian food and really knows Italian cuisine. That's vertical SaaS, software built for one specific industry. Examples are Clio and MyCase for legal industry or Procore for construction. Finally, think about the payment system that every restaurant needs. That's orthogonal SaaS, the essential tools that every business requires. Examples are Stripe for payments or HubSpot for marketing. Having helped companies expand across various countries, let me show you how big each market is. Horizontal SaaS can sell to any business, which is huge, but there's a catch. Larger market means more competition, need for significant funding, and takes longer time to succeed. Think of this as trying to launch a new fast food chain globally. Vertical SaaS focuses on one industry, so smaller market, but deeper penetration. It gets slightly easier to become the industry expert by building strong relationships like becoming the best Italian restaurant in your city. Orthogonal SaaS finds the sweet spot, as these provide essential services. Every business needs them and comes with strong integration opportunities, like being the only payment processor in town, or as we call it, Stripe. Now, let's dive into what makes these systems actually work. After reviewing thousands of patents filed by software companies, here are the critical elements. Let me share what it really takes to build these different types of software systems. Think of building horizontal SaaS like constructing a massive shopping mall. You need to handle thousands of people coming through those doors every day, just like Slack handles millions of messages flying back and forth. I've seen few chat apps crash every Monday morning when everyone logs in, and that's exactly what you don't want. Integration is another crucial piece. Look at Zoom. It works seamlessly with everything from your calendar to your email. But I've reviewed systems where people had to manually copy data between programs, that's like having a mall where you need to exit one store and re-enter through the main entrance to get to the next one. It just doesn't work. When it comes to user experience, Microsoft Teams nailed it with one-click video calls. But I once evaluated a system that needed two weeks of training before anyone could use it. Imagine needing a tutorial just to enter a store. That's how bad user experience can kill your software. Now, vertical SaaS is different. It's like building a specialized restaurant kitchen. Everything needs to be exactly right for that specific type of cooking. In healthcare, you need to track every single person who looks at a patient's record. It's like having a visitor logbook for sensitive data. Banking software needs to record every penny that moves, just like a bank vault with security cameras. The beauty of vertical SaaS is how it speaks the industry's language. Restaurant software uses terms like covers instead of customers. Real estate systems talk about units and tenants. It's like speaking the local dialect and making people immediately feel at home. Moving data into these systems is crucial too. The best ones can automatically import information from old systems, like having a moving company that unpacks everything for you. The worst? They make you type everything in manually. I've seen restaurants spending weeks just entering their menu items, while that time they could have spent serving customers. Orthogonal SaaS is like building city infrastructure as it has to work perfectly all the time. Take payment processing during Black Friday. It's like having every traffic light in the city working flawlessly during rush hour. Similarly, authentication systems need to verify users in split seconds, every single time. The best orthogonal systems make integration feel like plugging in a power cord, like just five lines of code and you're done. The worst ones? They're like needing an electrician to turn on your lights. When things go wrong, you want automatic backup systems kicking in instantly, like a hospital's backup generator. I've seen systems where one server failure brought everything down, and that's like one broken switch darkening an entire city. Let me share a simple way to check if any SaaS system is built right. First, it should respond as fast as opening Instagram, anything slower, and you're losing users. 
Security should be bank grade. Your data needs to be as safe as money in a vault. You need solid backup plans, like having a spare tire for every wheel. The system should grow as easily as Netflix adding new shows, and the code should be as well organized as a chef's kitchen where everything has its place. These aren't just technical details, but the difference between success and failure. I've seen companies save millions by getting these basics right from the start. Now that we understand how these systems work, let's talk about something crucial. Protecting your technology through patents. Think of patents like building a fence around your valuable property. In the horizontal SaaS world, Microsoft didn't just build Excel, but they protected how their spreadsheets calculate formulas. It's fascinating how they built the product and then created an invisible shield around it. I always tell founders, protect your core features before someone else copies them. When it comes to integration, it's like creating and patenting a universal power adapter. Imagine if only your software could connect seamlessly with every other tool out there. We've helped companies patent their integration methods, and it's become their biggest competitive advantage. It's not just about building the connections, it's about owning how those connections work. For scaling technology, you need to think ahead. One company patented their unique way of handling millions of users. When they grew exponentially, that patent became worth its weight in gold. It's like building a skyscraper, where you need to own not just the building, but the engineering innovations that make it stand tall. Vertical SaaS is different, as it's more like protecting secret recipes. In healthcare, we've worked on patents for electronic health record systems that revolutionized how hospitals manage patient data. One restaurant software company we advised patented their table management algorithm. It seems simple, but it's like Colonel Sanders protecting his secret blend of spices, which sets you apart in your industry. The magic of vertical SaaS patents lies in the workflows. We've seen construction software companies patent their material tracking systems and financial firms protect their compliance automation processes. These aren't just features, they're industry-specific innovations that solve real problems. Now, orthogonal SaaS patents are like protecting the foundation of a building. When we work with payment processing companies, we focus on patenting their core infrastructure as the essential systems and methods that make everything work. Security protocols, authentication systems, along with other features, are the fundamentals that need rock-solid protection. Now, let's talk about what everyone's really interested in, making money. After analyzing thousands of companies, here's what we've discovered about each model's revenue potential. Horizontal SaaS is fascinating, as it's all about scale. Take Zoom, charging just $10 to $20 per user, but multiply that by millions of users. Though I should warn you, you'll need deep pockets for marketing. It's like building a global brand that is expensive at first, but the payoff can be massive. Vertical SaaS follows a different playbook. We've worked with companies like Toast that charge more than $100 per restaurant. They reach profitability faster because they're not burning cash on massive marketing campaigns. Word spreads quickly in specific industries when one restaurant owner finds something that works, they tell everyone. Orthogonal SaaS is industry's favorite revenue model. Look at Stripe, 2.9% plus 30 cents per transaction. They grow as their customers grow. We've seen these companies become incredibly profitable because they're essential to their customers' success. Now, let us help you choose the right path. Horizontal SaaS is your path if you've got significant funding and a solution that truly works everywhere. But be ready for a marathon, not a sprint. We've seen companies take years to reach profitability, but when they do, it's extraordinary. Vertical SaaS might be your answer if you really know an industry and want faster profitability. One founder we worked with knew the restaurant business inside out, and he built exactly what they needed and became profitable in months, not years. Consider orthogonal SaaS if you're solving a fundamental problem and love working with developers. The technical challenges are greater, but so is the potential for creating something essential that businesses can't live without. Here's what most people miss. It's not about choosing the hottest or the trending SaaS model. It's about choosing the model that matches your expertise, resources, and market opportunity. I've seen brilliant founders fail because they chose a trendy model instead of one that played to their strengths. Success in SaaS isn't about following the crowd, but it's about building something that aligns with your unique advantages. I'd love to hear which model you're considering. Drop a comment below. I personally read everyone and love discussing strategy. This is Rahul Dev, helping you build better tech businesses. See you in the next one.